Have you been wondering how to generate more online leads? Well, this is the episode for you. I've got Andrew Dunn with me. He's helped agents and teams generate over a billion dollars worth of sales with online leads. This is one you're not going to miss. All right, Andrew, I am really excited to share some of the details, you know, as we've gotten to know each other a little bit and just really gotten a little better feel for what you and Peter do. And um, it, this is really an exciting time because you know, typically, you know, the process for agents is, is the main foundation of every business is you have to have a steady flow of leads that are coming in or that you're servicing and adding value to. And that's just exactly what you guys do. I know as you shared with me, you all now helped over, uh, um, you know, agents and teams literally generate over a billion dollars worth of sales through social media advertising. So what I would love to do today is really just to kind of break this down for anyone that's in on their journey, whether they've never run an ad before, we'll get real basic. And then I want to kind of walk through the process of, gener of, of starting those leads and kind of why we're doing that. But let me say this before we get started, man, I just really love what you guys are doing over at Elite Agent um, Secrets Podcast because you know, that's kind of how we first got connected, um, just with just trying to add value to people. And so really appreciate you what you guys are doing over there. If somebody's listening to this, after they get done with this, I know they're going to go, going to go check that out. So just make sure you do. But Andrew, if you don't mind, let's just start with foundationally. Let's yeah. talk about the agent that's right. never run an ad. Why social media ads, would you say? Predictability. One word for you, predictability. So for an agent that's coming in, it's like, what's your biggest problem? First of all, well, you got a lot. Let's be let's be real. You got a lot of problems, <laughs> but you got to be a solution orientated person. So the first problem you need to solve is how do you get leads? Now, the problem most agents have is they go and beg, borrow, lie, and steal to get referrals from friends, family, and whoever else. And when you think about it, when you put yourself in the position of those agents, it's actually a really tense process because imagine that agent. It's like I've not got anything and I need this money and they've got this one person who they think they're going to be able to get money from and then it's like I can't screw this up I can't do anything wrong and that's just like this horrible feedback loop for themselves where there is so much pressure they've never done anything before so the reason we go for social ads first before you get any referrals the beauty of it is you get a lot of at bats that's one of the best parts about social media so let's say we take an average of a five dollar cost per lead on facebook now of course you're going to get bad data numbers will be wrong and all this stuff but on average it's about five dollars per lead now you get so you spend 500 bucks a month you get 100 at bats let's say for example statistically about 30 percent pickup right so you 30 35 leads will pick up now all of a sudden 500 dollars You've now paid for 35 at-bat conversations on talking to people about buying or selling real estate. This is amazing. Like the value in this for new agents is insane because now when they're having these conversations consistently, all of a sudden when this referral is there, that conversation isn't awkward. It isn't intense. They're not putting all the pressure on themselves because it's one person because they potentially have other leads in the in their pipeline that they're going to go ahead and work. And it's not kind of this feast or famine. It's like, actually, I've got 15 leads that I need to go and work. I've had another three leads come in today I need to go and speak with. So the from a foundational standpoint with newer agents, it's going to allow you to have the flexibility to fuck up. And I hope I'm allowed to swear, but that, that's, that's the God's honest truth. Like it gives you that flexibility to kind of go, I can get this wrong and you aren't necessarily going to lose that commission because out of that 30 odd percent. So, so here's a very easy statistic for everyone listening for social leads in general, you get about a one to 3% conversion rate. Some people are higher. We've had people go as high as 8%, but one to 3% is a, is a good metric. So think about that for every hundred leads, you'll get one deal out of it. So you think like you had 35-ish conversations to hopefully get that one deal. That one deal might come in three or four months. And it's like, that's a lot of uh, experience now gathering very, very quickly, which is why I love it. And it's why I think new agents need to do this. I also, if you look at statistics on like the NAR, it's to do with, I think it was something, don't quote me in the exact number, it's like 80 or 90% of uh, people looking for homes start their search online right. and it's something like 80 or 90 percent also go with the first agent they speak with so if they're going online to find houses and they find a house and then you're the first agent they speak with 
because you've called them quickly, statistically, your chances of converting them are exponentially higher than someone sat down twiddling their thumbs. Yeah, no, this is really good from a standpoint too. I love the way that you break these numbers down because most people don't understand their numbers. And when you understand the numbers, you know, what you always say it is, is listen, with online leads, you're going to have to kiss some frogs to get to the print, so to speak. But in reality, when you're doing those things, you're building up the ability to convert better and at a higher pace. The other thing I think people forget about is these 35 at bat, so to speak, they begin to be added to your database in a way that you can begin to add value to those folks consistently, which now we're seeing some interesting things, Andrew, is that for us, the ideal client that we've generated online, they really get ripe, so to speak, about nine months after they come on, typically. So we're seeing that, that where it's not just the immediate, as long as you consistently add value, this begins to compound over time. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, it's exactly what happens. So that's why you have these one to three. The difference between the one and the three is the compound effect over time of adding value. And as we have heard a thousand times in the real estate game, where it's like, it's not, if that person doesn't buy, but you provided so much value to them and you built that equity in their relationship, they're far more likely to refer you to someone that they know to be the agent for them too, which obviously happens because with online lead generation, that you're just building relationships at scale. You know, that is the whole purpose of this. And again, come back to those at bats, it's like you just get a lot more of them, which is why I think it's more powerful for newer agents for that reason. Yeah, I would agree. Hey, you know what I just realized, Andrew? If people are just tuning in, they're like, wow, we're going to cover both sides of the bell curve of the King's English today. We're going to have you with the proper English, you know, accent and me. <laughs> Not so much, you know. Um, so this is perfect. I think I think people will get some value out of not just this, but um, they're gonna they're gonna ride a roller coaster of dialect today as well, which is pretty fun. Um, so listen, uh, let's let's get back to you know. There are so many different social media avenues. Whether you know every everything's different. Everybody has a specialty. What have you found that's best for you as far as lead generation that you guys really focus on? So all of ours is like well, I say all 90, 95% is Facebook, Instagram. Um, it's just, it's the platform you put money in and you get leads out. Now, something we're starting to lean more into now is YouTube. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm going to touch on this very briefly because it's not our core focus. The, the power of YouTube is if you're in the correct market, it is just never ending leads. We've got people inside of our team that were seven figure agents in their first year because of YouTube. Right. Yeah. But they were in Texas, in Houston or right. Dallas, in Dallas, Texas, right? So they, yeah. And it just works for their market. I actually know another agent in Key West and she's been doing it for over two years and never got a single lead, mm -hmm. right? And it's, it's she's got a bit of Mm -hmm. It's so much. So the problem is with YouTube is it takes time to build those leads. And I, I hate to say it, but it really does. The market really matters when it comes to YouTube. The beauty of Facebook is the market doesn't matter because mm -hmm. the idea is, is like, are these people on Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp or Messenger? Yes or no. It covers all of them. There's also uh, networks for display ads that Facebook now has too. Yeah. But it's just, it's so much more connected uh, and that that really is why we focus on it. And like I said, it's it's a platform where, for example, I could take an agent right now and assuming I had access to their account and stuff within 15 minutes, have them a fully built performing ad published and ready to go waiting for Facebook to approve it. And right. by tomorrow, they would have leads coming from it. Like that is about as powerful, in my opinion, as you can get. Now, that's, that's it. it's no. like, okay. It's not a referral, but it's like it's filling your pool. No, this is filling your pool. And this is what I love is, is I mean, and you guys, what I, what I really appreciate what you do is um, obviously you're helping a number of agents, but man, you've made all of this available on YouTube. So if the person is out there and that's kind of what we're going to probably yeah. talk to today is, is that person that may want to generate some ads themselves. Yeah. Um, if they go to your YouTube channel, andrewre.com, you, you've got a lot of these step-by-step -step things. So let's give them overview and then we'll let people go over there to find additional information if you don't mind let's talk yeah. to the person that says i'd like to start generating leads tomorrow where would you suggest on their own that they start yeah so yeah i like you said so if you got my youtube channel just type into youtube andrew re as one word you will i've literally put all of this out there for free for those action taking agents i've done how to sell seller ads buyer ads i show our top performing ads 
So starting with Facebook, I'm going to, if it's all right with you, I'm literally going to do like a verbal walkthrough of setting up a Facebook ad for people and they can check out the YouTube for the visual. But when it comes to YouTube, the first thing is, is you now have to run what you call special ads category. If you don't, you'll get your Facebook account banned. You'll get your business manager banned. It's it's to do with discrimination and policy. So first thing you got to do, make sure you select special ads category and housing. First thing, the the next thing, the, the campaign style, just you know, leave as is. Ad set budget, campaign budget, re- really doesn't matter. We're going to be running small budgets of ten, fifteen dollars a day to start. Is kind of where you want to be. Now you're gonna come. You're gonna select the lead generation campaign, and then you're gonna to go to the ad set level uh, next because that's all you need to do. And then on that ad set level, you'll have instant form selected, which will be uh, it's a lead form that we'll cover in the the ad section. And then you're going to want to select location. Now, one thing people miss is under location, it auto defaults to everybody in this location. You don't actually want that. You want people living in this location because you're targeting people by a pin drop. So imagine going on Google Maps, you drop a pin. That's how Facebook works. And it's surround, it targets a location around it. So you drop a pin or you type in your location. So for us, it's Boca Raton, Florida, drops a pin in. Now, the minimum you can now do because of the special ads is um, 15 kilometer or 15 miles, 25 kilometer radius is the minimum you can now do. You used to be able to literally do micro segments. We used to have it down to a mile radius, which was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> like we only wanted to do certain streets. You could actually do it. Um, full nerd section, but you could actually do negative pins. So you could literally target a street, which is how crazy that is. So you're getting like 50 homeowners. Anyway, so you drop your pin and you select people only living in this location. Now, the next thing is for the ad placements themselves. Oh, sorry, the budget I'll just touch on. Like I mentioned, you want to be 10 to $15 a day. That's going to be about right. It's going to get you about 100 leads a month, give or take, depending on the market. And it's something else that I'll touch on in the ad section, which will vary your cost. Next section is going to be the uh, placements. Now, you could ordinarily, I'd say, leave it as automatic. But the thing is, it's got to figure out where it's going to find best placements. And because we're running such low budgets, just stick with the core, which is Facebook, Instagram feeds. It's where the majority of people are. So just select, deselect everything else and just select Facebook, Instagram feeds. If this is something you're finding a lot of success with, there is other strategies around placements that you can try and see if you can get cheaper leads from elsewhere. Like marketplace can be good for some people. But again, it's not something I want to necessarily recommend off the bat because it works for some and it doesn't work for others when feeds works for everyone. Um, And then that's kind of it for the ad set. Optimization, you just leave everything as is. When it comes to the ad level, the first thing is actually going to be the ad copy and creative. Now, when it comes to the creative, I'll cover that first. The world's easiest, just again, this is how to get you the fastest results tomorrow at the cheapest cost is going to be collages are either three or four. So imagine a quadrant. So you either go quarters or you have like a big one at the top and two quarters and just have nice houses in your area. It doesn't necessarily need to be the house you are wanting to buy or, or sell. It, it just nice houses in your area. So one thing we've seen a lot of people do, sadly, <laughs> and fail massively because is they'll be selling in, you know, um, Alabama, for example, and they'll have some penthouse in New York. It's like, that's not your market, obviously. So people are seeing your ad. It doesn't resonate. So these need to be market-specific homes. You should probably have some real estate photography you've done. If you're a real estate agent, you've probably got some photography uh, of nice homes. Use that. So three or four quadrants. Now, as for ad copy, it's just drawing attention and keeping it short. So it could be like, attention, Boca Raton, um, residents. Are you looking to buy or sell in, you know, specific area? We've done certain streets or certain neighborhoods. Like I always remember like Woodhaven Avenue out in Cali. I remember that one so well from a client. And it was like, are you looking to buy or sell in, you know, Woodhaven? And then it's like, if you're looking to list a home, it could be the home's requirements. We've got a three bed, four, you know, four bed, three bath home, you know, four thousand square feet, you know, garden, two car garage. And you could do it that way with the quadrant. Or a buyer ad, it's even simpler. Are you looking to buy a home? You know, attention. Are you looking to buy a home in a certain area? Click learn more below and we'll reach out. It's like this stuff isn't as complicated as people think, but it's kind of, we've seen some crazy stuff. Like we've seen realtors running ads of their own face to sell homes. And it's like, 
for us, this is something I've done for like nearly seven years. So it's very like logical to me, like how this should work because I've got so much money under my belt at this point and spent on this platform. But it's like, don't overcomplicate. It doesn't need to be a huge monologue about your life story. I hate to tell you, no one cares. No one cares. They want to know what you can do for them. So it's like, if looking to buy or sell a home, click learn more, have some nice pictures of the house, they'll click learn more. Here's where some secret source comes in. So when they click learn more, they will go to a lead form. Now, here's the big difference. And I've just recently actually done a video on this very specifically as well. A lot of people in Facebook talk about, oh, I've got a $1 lead. That's not necessarily a good thing, but I get that it sounds great. So the cheaper leads, if you want cheap leads, don't ask any questions. Just say, hey, give me your contact information. Now, the way Facebook works is it auto populates the information. So if you have your name and phone number and email from years ago, it auto populates that. That's kind of one of the problems with the platform. So you, that's why you end up with bad data. Unlike, say, YouTube, for example, where everyone has to type it in, right? So that's one of, again, the platform intricacies. Now, there is ways you can ask them to kind of confirm their information. But the next, the next point is, like, after that, they can just pl- click confirm. You'll get sent that lead and you can call them. That's how, if you are a hustler, that's actually what I recommend. Because if you are willing to smile and dial, the bad data come hell or high water, you are on that phone and you are really going after it. Like you're like the Jordan Belfort of real estate, right? That's going to give you way more at bat. So for your $500 a month, you might get 300 leads, right? Which even if you get a lot more not interested, you are going to have way more opportunities at your opening line. So if you're wanting to practice your script and you're wanting a lot more at bat, ask less questions. Now, on the polar opposite side, if you are in a position where you're happy to spend a little bit more, get a little bit less and have higher quality, you ask more questions. So like our our top questions are, do you currently own a rent or buy or sell? Like, do you own a house as well so you can sell it? Obviously. Big one is when are you looking to move? As soon as possible, one to three months, three to six, six uh, to 12 or 12 plus are kind of the, the obvious ones to go for. The reason we ask that is because we filter this inside of our CRM. So if someone puts 12 months plus, we know they're just inquiring. So we know we can probably just follow up via text and say, hey, you know, what are you interested in? But let's say, Jimmy, you came through and you came through and I'm five minutes, I'm about to call you and you're 12 months plus or you're nine to 12. And then Sandra comes through and she says she wants to move as soon as possible. The way our CRM is built is it puts Sandra at the top of the list because she's a, a, a closer opportunity for us to make money right. than you are. Right. So that's why we ask that question. And then the following one is, uh, especially with buyers, this is specifically, is just about price range. So if we know the median in our area is say 400, we could say, what are you looking at? Like 350 to four. So we know they're like on the cusp. We're maybe having to do a bit of, you know, a, a bit of um, negotiating for them. Um, are they like 400, 450? So that, you know, we know they should be in the market and it's kind of okay. They're 450, 500. And then it's like, okay, we're going more luxury. Right. And then you can go, we, we've done more extensive lead forms, which we basically get like 10, 15, 20 dollar leads where we're asking how many beds are they looking for? How many baths are they looking for? And things like that. So then we know a lot more information up front. And that first call isn't so much to kind of check their information after they've filled out 10 or 12 questions. We know they're a person that probably has double checked their information because they're far more serious if they've gone through that depth of survey right so like that as like hopefully uh, and a vi- somewhat visual of me explaining but an audio version of setting up an ad has helped some people to realize that like this isn't crazy complicated but some of these little intricacies that i've shown you are going to enable you to have far more success than anyone else going out there and, and putting a picture of their face on saying hey you're looking to buy a home hey um this is so good andrew I, there's a couple things i want to circle back on also because i know that you know certain ads in certain areas produce better results. Um, when you look at an ad, what are you looking at in that first 48 hours or first week, I guess is even more complete data to see whether this is an ad to continue to run or to modify, or are you always split testing these ads? 
Great question. Split testing only really comes when you're spending a decent chunk of change. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're spending $10, $15 a day following the format I've given you, you will get good lead cost. Um, You're going to know within 24 or 48 hours, like within your first day of launching, you follow the format that I've laid out. You should be seeing sub five, like five dollars, seven dollars. Depend. Obviously, market does depend and vary, and the number of questions and things. But if you went super basic, name, phone number, email, launch that ad type. If you're not getting sub five dollar leads, even on your first day to two days, I'd say there was something else uh, afoot there. But when we're yet to see that, the, when we see lead costs go up, is where we start trying other things. And like one thing that I do want to mention because this is why say advertising agencies and coaching companies exist is they have the money and the client base to do a lot of testing to give you the end result, which is what a lot of people don't appreciate when, for example, I've spent tens of millions of dollars on this platform at this point. And that knowledge is what I then pass down in a diluted form, say, just do this. You don't have that money to go and go out and discover that information that I've had the, you know, pleasure to do for other clients. Right. And, and that that's really the power of kind of what I'm sharing here is like, this is seven years of me on this platform, understanding the nuance of the platform and like other things. Again, I don't want to go crazy yeah. nerdy on people here, but this year, iOS 14, 14.5 came out where basically Apple brought in privacy and blocked the transfer of data, which screwed over all the advertising platforms. So before we were actually doing having to build landing pages because they converted better to ask questions and it stopped us getting incorrect phone numbers and emails because it wasn't auto-populated. However, now because of that data being missing, the lead costs are so much more in funnels. It's not worth it. It's better to keep it all in Facebook, have a bit more bad data, but the lead cost is substantially less where now we don't build any funnels and landing pages, which again is like, it's a learned thing. It's like we were last year, everyone we had, everybody was in, was in funnels, everyone. Now everyone is in lead forms. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Andrew, it's, we're also at a, at a time, at a period of time where if someone says, oh, well, I just, you know, I, I'm just having trouble generating leads. Ultimately, um, that's on the agent because never has there been a time where they can go and get the free information like on your, I mean, if they type in how to run Facebook ads as a real estate agent and they didn't know your page and it didn't come up, there's tons of other people that teach this. If they are willing to spend the money and hire someone like you guys, they're going to generate leads. So the option there is, I mean, is, is really, do you want leads? Are you willing to do what it takes to either learn this or buy these leads? And then this is the most important part that I think a lot of people forget about is that they they just think they're going to buy leads they're going to come in and they're going to magically just become sales let's talk about the follow-up portion and what you see as the traits of the agents that have the higher conversion rates what do they do different that, that people can pattern oh my god love this question okay so i'm going to give you the number one secret to converting online leads higher than anybody else i swear to god this is the so it's, I'm going to do this kind of back to front. The, the secret to converting online leads closer to 3% and up is get in front of them as soon as possible. Now, this sounds so stupid to be like, oh, well, yeah, I'll try and get in front of my clients. Do you know how many people don't do this? They just call them or text them and they think, oh, it's an online lead. They want to be dealt with like that. No, these are real humans, just like you, just like any other lead. The, the, the way you convert online leads way higher than anyone else is get in front of them as soon as possible. You know they're serious get that coffee shop meeting set up, get them into your office, get them wherever, pick them up, show them how to do something, get in front of them. So that's kind of, I wanted to get that out there right now because that genuinely is the number one tip to convert them higher than anyone else. Now, the first step, lead comes in, you have to have a system. I'm not sure if I need to go too far into this, but if you don't have a CRM, you're doing this whole thing wrong. Right. So you need a CRM. Uh, there's amazing ones out there. Like we have our own that we built. However, like a lot of big teams we know use Follow Up Boss, great system, yeah. and others use Chime. There's, there's all sorts out there. We use anyway. Boomtown. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, it's, a, it's out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We own KV Calls, another one we yeah. use. Mm-hmm. Get them into the system first thing first. If you're if you haven't got an ISA or if you're the hustler, five minutes or less, call them. Some people go, oh no, it doesn't matter. I know teams where they do it in two minutes. I've said, oh, you got to do five minutes or less ago. No, we got a rule in our team, it's two minutes. And like, if you're not, you're like, you're, you're in deep trouble. 
Like it's two minutes, I don't know, but five minutes you need to be calling them. They don't pick up, drop them a text. You've, we've found incredibly high conversion rates from SMS marketing. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will fill it out and they might be at work. They might be doing something else and they, they genuinely can't take your call. They also don't know who's calling, right? Drop them a text. And a lot of people respond to the text a lot. Though you'll be, you know, hey, it's Andrew from Bug Bosses. How you doing? I just saw you filled out, you know, Facebook ad or the ad more interest in House XYZ. I just wanted to touch base and learn a little bit more. Hey, yeah, thanks for reaching out. Yeah, I was interested. Could you tell me a bit more? And you start that conversation back and forth. The other power of it being SMS is it's easier. I'm not saying you should do this right way, but it's easier to outsource. Like you can have a member of your team and you could get a VA, someone who's not necessarily in the US, who can have those conversations that are essentially pennies on the dollar for your time. And because it's not verbal communication, it's written, they can take that off your hands far quicker, mm -hmm. uh, which is another part. Now, we have drip sequences with voicemail, calls, emails, yeah. and SMS. Now, voicemail, believe it or not, is usually one of the last ones we do. We're not huge fans of it because one, most people don't check it. And two, we've found very few people actually call us back. Mm -hmm. That's just our that's just our feedback on it. Now, when it comes to um, SMS and email, like, again, we tend to find this historically, it's just our data, but our data has said that the older generations tend to respond through email that we've seen. Like they tend to lean a little bit more on the old emails than they do on the text messages, but every person, every market's different. Um, I, I can appreciate that. And we just built out a drip sequence. Now, the drip sequence is, is just embedded with value. Like something that me and you spoke about before, Jimmy, it's like, just be a servant, like just lead with value. Like, you know, we were talking on, uh, on our show about the whole video CMAs and it's like just providing people with incredible value where to the point where if, even if they didn't buy from you, it's so good that they want to refer you to someone else. Like your emails, drip sequences, which can obviously be a bit heavier on, you know, wordage and information can provide market reports and things like that. And that's where you're just coming from that place of value and going like, hey, I'm just here to support you. That's, I would say, the difference between SMS and email. Email, you can be far more information heavy and just that value giving. When with text message, it's much more transactional. Like you're just trying to get the information and you're trying to get them to the end goal as soon as essentially you can and they can. I would say that's the big difference. So if people aren't responding so much on text, it might be because they aren't that serious and they aren't ready to move forward. And now, and you know, so some of those things to think about too. Yeah, no, this is good. And so on the sequence there, obviously it's, um, it's get in touch with them as quick as you can. And ultimately what we talk about is, is that, you know, this is the qualifying stage. Uh, ultimately we're not trying to sell them anything. We're just trying to identify, can we help them? Is there, yeah. is there an opportunity for us to help them now or in the future, um, which helps us then identify and categorize them in our CRM with the type of program and drip campaign, you know, alerts about properties, whatever it is, where we can set it up to optimize our ability to serve them in the way they want to be served and the best way to, to serve them. So um, um, when we're talking about that, now we're talking about the conversion side. You know, we, we've talked a little bit about the follow up portion of that. Let's talk about the lead that because as we talked about, some of these things take time. Let's follow. Let's talk about your nurturing program for those leads that say, hey, we're nine months down the road or we're kind of you know just in the process of getting started. What does that look like as far as the nurturing? Yeah, so this kind of touches on what I was just mentioning about that whole email and um, market reports, delivering value, homes that have sold or have come on the market that maybe are more relative to where they're at in their buying cycle. So it's also, let's say, for example, they filled out their interest to homes at 4 four fifty. There's no point sending them homes in a drip sequence or an email going, oh, this is $3 million home that's just sold. Yeah. Like, right. it's pointless. You Make it specific. And this is when also CRMs and website IDX and all this stuff really like, holy hell, can you leverage your time? Mm -hmm. Because now the system is doing it all for you because they know you go, they're searching, you pass that data, they're searching for 4450, sending them homes and giving them more information. And I do think also it's about that personal touch as well, like reaching out and having that that email, especially if you spoke to them, I would say the big difference is, is if you've had a communication with them previously, if you know something's going on with their life, whether they're moving, whether 
daughter's had graduation, whether the dog's been sick, like all these slight uh, tweaks to your script, your tonality, your your understanding where they're at, you're meeting them where they're at, are going to help you resonate with them. And through that, your conversion rate tends to go up even further. Because I can't, I'm not sure about you, Jimmy, but the amount of times someone has remembered a small thing about me, and then it just made me realize that they were listening. And all of a sudden, there is much more of a connection there than there is to anybody else. And it was something so inconsequential, so inconsequential. And then you're like, how did you remember that? And you're just like, oh, I was just, you know, I remembered it from last time we spoke. And I'd be like, wow. You know, and you kind of are taken back and you're like, no one listens that much anymore. So right. when someone does, the barrier is so low that when someone does listen, you take note. Yeah. Andrew, this is what I love about this. Most people, when they think of online leads, they just think of transactions. Yeah. Ultimately, if you're doing this correctly, online leads should lead to, to, your, uh, rep, to having some of these really having an opportunity to build a relationship in a way that is not just one transaction, but just continues to compound over time. What you're talking about with the follow-up system here really is the difference between 99% of the people that are generating online leads and just trying to turn and burn versus building those longer term relationships. The follow-up on this is the most critical part as I've seen over mine. Um, it really is making those initial conversations in a way that they feel comfortable sharing with you in a way that they don't feel like you're jamming something or trying to sell them something immediately, but that you genuinely have an interest in what it is and how you can serve them. So um, listen, in wrapping up, if you had to mention to someone that maybe is out there and has been thinking about this, what would you say is the first thing they should do to really get started on generating these online leads? Is it education? Is it finding someone? What would you say is the first thing they should do? fail fast and fail often um so when it comes to it like again just if you check out my youtube channel andrew Ari, you're gonna see me walk through i even i genuinely share all our top ads i even go into our ad accounts you can see i think the latest one i released is an ad account we spent 40 grand on in like the last couple of months like and i break down lead costs in tons of different areas so you can see what it's like on the back end i think a lot of it is like just getting started a lot of agents are just in this like analysis paralysis like i need to get everything perfect and like that's just not where you need to be you, you need to fail faster than everybody else because there's only actually so many things you can fail at and then all of a sudden everything's like oh this is actually quite easy now the beauty of online leads is it's you're not having to do the learning i've done it for you and also the machine learning which is like trying to get you better lead costs is out there doing it for you this is this whole leverage thing now the one caveat I would say, online lead generation is amazing. However, if you haven't got any salesmanship, like you, the sales side is a bit tougher for you. This is the one place where I'd be like, you probably should get some mentorship because sales is like a, a skill set like no other. And I, me and Peter are big proponents of teams. Like a lot of people are against them and we're actually not, we're like, we're for solo agents as well. But the thing about a team is you can leverage their experience. And yes, you're paying a, a split to them. However, if you think of that split as a mentorship fee, like a coaching program, and as long as that team is good, now that is a big caveat because there is a lot of bad teams out there, which is kind of where this gets a bit harder. Um, but a good team with great mentorship, that price you pay will come back tenfold. And the great teams, as you grow and scale in that, kind of conversation where you might want to go and leave and go out on your own two feet those conversations take a different turn because they might actually want to keep you on splits come a lot lower because they want you to grow within them and they'll give you additional things and brokerages are the same and i think that's the only thing that i would say it's like if sales is new to you i would start i would join a team that's my honest truth i join a te team or if you can play for coaching pay for coaching uh, my two things and then run online leads but if you're up for failing and you are up for the challenge and you are happy to you know you be your own own worst critic don't do it just start online lead generating and pick up the phone because yeah. it's going to get exponentially less scary after 30 times of cocking up yeah, yeah. you're just not going to care anymore
That's it. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think I think reps just make you better, and it, it's just it it does make a lot of sense. That I mean, literally, I, I couldn't have said it better. Fail fast, fail often, um, because the faster you fail and the more often you fail, the more successes you're going to have. Uh, right. Andrew, this has been great. I mentioned it earlier, but man, I just want to make sure if you're out there and um, you're looking for a podcast with interviews of agents that just are bringing insight at a level that I really enjoy um, listening to. Elite Agent Secrets is probably one of my favorite podcasts from a standpoint of just really having, uh, not coming from a place of theory, but coming from a place of experience with everyone they talk to. Um, listen, that. really appreciate you, Andrew and Peter. Uh, also, your, your partner over there on the uh, podcast. If yeah. anybody wanted to reach out to you, the best place to go to the uh, to the YouTube channel or how would they reach out to you? Yeah, so Andrew Ari YouTube channel for all my free content. I'm releasing at least a video a week. Uh, I try to do more, but it's really good content. Like it's proper actionable. It's not theory. So I'm trying to give it the best foot forward for all agents who are wanting to go out there and succeed. And then, you know, it's just Andrew Dunn on Facebook. You can look me up, find me, just put in like Andrew Dunn, EXP, something like that. I'll probably come up because I think it's in my profile somewhere. There's a load of other Andrew Dunn's. Hit me up in the DMs, message me. If you need some more help, happy to do so. And then, yeah, also our podcast, which, like you said, Elite Agent Secrets. We release an episode every single day interviewing the top 1% of agents all over the world. Jimmy was a wonderful guest for us. And like you said, these are all people who have learned it through practice and not through theory, which is exactly what we're about. We teach what we know, which is why we don't teach cold calling. Because I don't do it because I hate it. <laughs> uh, that's good stuff. All right. I appreciate you, Andrew. Listen, reach out to Andrew. Let him know how much you appreciate this. If you got some value, we'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for watching the video. I specifically chose the video below for you because it builds on the one you just watched. I hope it's helpful and I'll talk to you soon.